Hey, it's Lee Halliday, and this video is all about cookies. We're going to cover cookies in React on the client side, and we're also going to cover cookies on the server side, and how to set them and delete them in both uh, scenarios, and why you would choose one over the other. We're doing this within a, um, a Next.js application that I'm going to pull up now, but we're keeping the code nice and simple. We've got a button here that should simulate a login, so we're going to be setting um, a cookie called token. And then we've got another one called logout. So we're first going to start client side, where our JavaScript within the browser is going to be setting and removing cookies. So to get started, I've got this JS cookie library that's pretty easy to work with. And when you click the login button, what we're going to do is we're going to say cookie.set. And you're asked to give it a name, so we're going to say token. Our value will be ABCD, so you would get this through your actual authentication service, whether it be Firebase Auth or whatever. And the last one is, a, is an object where we can set some values like when it expires. So we're going to say that this expires 1 divided by 24, which is basically just one hour long. So we do this, and we go into the browser, we click Login, Refresh, and we should have our, our token show up here. So our token cookie with ABCD. So now we're going to click log out and that should remove this token, this token cookie. Okay, so we're in here, we're in log out and we're going to say cookie.remove and then we just have to tell it the, the, name of the, the name of the cookie we want to remove. So token, just like this. Come back, we click log out just click refresh and you can see that it's gone. So set, remove. So this is great, it's really easy to work with. It actually does get submitted to the server and we can prove this by recreating the token. And then I've got down in here a get server side props um, export function that's uh, Next.js specific. This runs on the server. So basically what we can do is we can access the request dot cookies dot token. So we're going to take that and we're going to pass this as a prop to our component. So when you return props, this returns the token. So we have to receive the props token. And why don't we just put this in an H2 here? So our token is token like this. So because this is bah, worked right away actually. So there we go. So we read it on the server side, which passed it as a prop to our React component. So when it rendered, we filled in this value. So if we were to log out, um, it's not state, so it doesn't automatically refresh here. So if we refresh, okay, undefined cannot be serialized. So this was undefined. It had issues with that. So we'll just do the old or empty string. Refresh that. Now we're logged out. Click this, refresh. We're logged in. So this works great, except what we've got is a, is a non-HTTP only uh, cookie. Basically, JavaScript on the client can read it. That's really easy to work with, but it's not the most secure thing. Because if you have another script running on your page, or somebody does an XSS attack, um, cross-site scripting. Basically what they can do is if they have JavaScript that can run on your page, they can read your token, which basically gives them access to your account. That's no good. So what I would use client-side cookies for is remembering stuff like, uh, do you want dark mode or, or light mode? Do you want English or French? Do you want CAD or USD currency? Stuff that's that doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be secure. When you do want it to be secure, you want cookies that are not available to read in JavaScript on the client, in the browser. And what that is, it's called an HTTP only cookie. So we're going to go do that now. And in order to do that, we actually have to implement setting and unsetting the cookie on the server. So inside of Pages API, I'm going to implement the login endpoint. And what this will do is it will receive the token and then it will write it to a cookie that is HTTP only, meaning it's only available on the server. So no JavaScript will be able to read this, this um, cookie. That, um, and that sort of control structure 
is handled by the browser um, themselves. So anyways, we're in here, we receive a request, so they're gonna post the token to us. So what we'll do is we'll access the token inside of rec.body.token. So this here will give us the token. And the way you set a, set a cookie is you do it by setting um, a header. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say set header and we have to give it the name of this, this header that we're setting in our HTTP response back to the browser. And what this is, is set cookie. So that's how you set a cookie on the server side in the HTTP response. And the way this works is we have a different package. This one's just called cookie. So the front end one was called JS cookie. Back end one is called cookie. And we call a function called serialize. And serialize wants to know the name of the cookie. So we're calling it token. It wants to know the value. So we're gonna pass in the value that's being read from the incoming request that's gonna send us the token. And now we have to set all of the options, but we're gonna set heck of a lot more options when we're on the server side to make it more secure. So the first one is HTTP only to true, meaning no JavaScript running in the browser will be able to read this cookie at all. It will sort of be invisible to them. Secure, what this means is only send this cookie over HTTPS connections. I don't have HTTPS running uh, locally, so what you can do is you can say where the process.env.nodeenv is not development. So when you're running on production, it should be secure. How long is this cookie going to last for? We'll set it a max age. This one wants it in seconds, so we'll do 60 seconds times 60 minutes to get us to that hour mark. So there's a new property that you can attach to cookies called same site. And this sort of controls um, which sites have access to read this, this um, cookie. So say it was requesting a, a script on your page from a different domain, or it was requesting an image or something like that. This controls whether it's going to send the cookie up with that request. I've got a website right here that I'm going to link to and it's going to go into a lot more detail of what this same site means. But the value we're going to give it is strict. So we want the most secure right now. And what path on our website is this cookie going to be available on? You do slash for everywhere. So I'm just gonna pause it for one sec because I wanted to just mention that I launched a course. I launched a course where we are going to be building a Next.js application, front end to back end, start to finish. We use TypeScript, GraphQL, type GraphQL on the server, Apollo client and Apollo server. We're gonna use Prisma to get our data from Postgres, authentication with Firebase, Mapbox. We're gonna deploy it. We're gonna have image uploads to Cloudinary. So it's gonna do a lot of stuff. It's 50 bucks. Please check it out. I would appreciate it. This is the app we're gonna be building where it's sort of like, um, like Airbnb, where as you zoom in the map, it updates over here on the left. It's just taking a sec because my uh, server's loading and it will show you only the houses that are on the page. So there we go, we have the other one, zoom into this one. You can go in, view the details about this house. You can add new ones by clicking the add house, but you can only do that when you're authenticated. So it's going to cover a lot of functionality. I think it's a really sweet course. Please check it out. All right, back to our program here. So we've implemented the login functionality. I'm going to copy and paste this and go over here to log out and just paste this in. So logging out, we want to basically remove this cookie. So we're gonna do two changes. First change, we're gonna set the value of the cookie to an empty string. Second one, we're going to get rid of max age and we're going to use one called expires. And we're gonna say that it expires a new date zero. This means zero seconds from the Unix EPOSH start date. Basically it means back in 1970 is when this cookie expired. So when the browser picks that up, it's going to delete it. So if we wanna use these HTTP only cookies, we have to call the login and the logout endpoints. And we're gonna do that back here on the client. So I'm gonna comment out the client side cookie code. 
and instead I'm going to make a fetch request to API login. And we need to pass a few things to make this work. So we are going to be posting the data to the server. We're going to set some headers and this will be the content type header so that the server knows that it's JSON data when it receives that request. And then the body of our request itself is going to be json.stringify, a token of ABCD. So we're going to post this token back to the server. It's going to receive the request, then respond immediately. And in the response, it will pass this set cookie header to set the token cookie with this value that we posted up. Perfect. So we're just going to go down to the log out and we're going to copy and paste this because it's mostly the same. The only changes is that we're going to post to log out and we don't need to pass anything up. So you can just pass up an empty object because we don't need anything to log out. The server is just going to take care of that for us. So if we go back to the browser, I'm just going to delete this to start fresh. So we have no token right now. If I click login, it immediately, you see the cookie pop open here, but now we have HTTP only. So this, you can't read it from, from the browser. Log out, removes it. Log in, adds it back in. And if we were to go to the network requests, we can see that it's calling login. It's passing up our token. And in the response headers, you can see here this header being passed back, set cookie, token is ABCD, max age is 3600, which is one hour, HTTP only, same site strict. So this is the response coming back versus the log out. The response coming back sets the value to empty and it expired back in 1970. So that the browser picks that up. Oh, it's expired. I'm going to delete it. That's what I wanted to cover here. You would use HTTP only cookies when you want to be more secure, when you don't want any JavaScript in the browser to be able to read it. So this is a great place for authentication tokens and things that are more private. I will paste the link for both the starter code and the finished code up to GitHub and, and post it below in this video so you can follow along if you'd like. Um, thank you very much. Take care. Bye.